We're in Medina, Ohio. The Boston Tea Party. We have a guy who doesn't know enough to understand that when you're self-employed, you have to pay taxes too. You're on. Obama, one big ass mistake, America. After the days of 9-11. And in those days in 9-11, America understood that we were under attack. And what I see today is my fellow Americans and Ohioans, and you get it. There is a greater threat in what is happening in Washington right now than what took place on 9-11, and that's hard to imagine. I'm so glad to see all of you here today. You must not have gotten the memo from the Homeland Security Office. You know, my wife and I just received home our son from five years of service in the 82nd Airborne. Law, who served six years in special forces and we were going to have a pig roast but we thought we'd bring him to a tea party you and I are offended at the suggestion that our federal government would begin to investigate you and me for exercising our First Amendment right to protest and bring our redress of grievance to our government. One of the great founding fathers, Samuel Adams, said this, it does not require a majority to prevail, but rather, an irate, tireless minority intent on setting brush fires in people's minds. And that's what we're doing today all across America with over 2,000 tea parties. They're getting the memo. We're sending one. You know, Bill Batchelder, your state representative, my good friend, and a true statesman, and there are few of them in Columbus, and even fewer in Washington. You have the privilege of having a true statesman represent you in your district. Let's give him a round of applause. But Bill and I were sitting down here we're getting real nervous, because after hearing Randy the farmer and Brandy the housewife, we thought, we're cooked. <laughs> And that's what it's all about. It's about every average day Americans sending a message to Washington. It's not about a political party. It's about you and me. It's about our kids. It's about our grandchildren. And they're spending their money of money they haven't even earned yet. And that's criminal and it's extortion. It's got to stop. One of Ohio's great presidents, President James Garfield, said this, in a nation such as this where the people choose their leaders, if the Congress be ignorant, reckless, and corrupt, it is because the people tolerate ignorance, recklessness, and corruption. What we're saying today is we're not going to tolerate it any longer. We're standing shoulder to shoulder today because we realize what's at stake. You know, the new administration says it wants to build a new foundation. I have news for it. We have a foundation. It's called the Constitution of the United States of America, the Bill of Rights. And we're not giving it up. Our organization is a voter education organization. It's nonpartisan. We develop a voter guide around every election and we pass it out throughout Ohio. We put out two and a half million in 2004, two million in 2008. We're going to do it again in 2010. We're a public policy organization. We're pro-life, we're pro-family. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. And defending our religious liberties. And I just want to speak as a Christian at this moment, just for a second, that I was offended by the president's conduct when he went overseas, apologizing for our nation. Bowing to an Arab king of a Muslim nation, which would never have been done before by any standing president. And then announcing on state television in Turkey that America is no longer a Christian nation. Well, that would be news to his predecessors, Harry Truman and Abraham Lincoln, Thomas Jefferson and Teddy Roosevelt, Woodrow Wilson, they all believed America was a Christian nation. We still are! And we have religious liberty in this country, and we exercise it. And we're going to make a difference when it comes to the issues that are before Congress right now. And we need your voice to join as one to weigh in and Congress needs to hear you. They need to hear what's happening today. They, you need to write letters, you need to make phone calls. If they don't unplug the phones in Washington, I wonder sometimes, it's hard to get through. But when your congressmen come back to the district, politely sit with them and share with them your views. There's nothing more that weighs heavier than on a politician's heart than the voice of a constituent he's going to have to face on election day. And that's what you and I need to do. This is an opportunity for us in the next weeks and months to really rally together with other Americans and to say we're not going to take it anymore. And when I look at my children, and I think about the America that I inherited, and this great blessing, and this republic that we exercise our free rights, I want to ensure that they have the same liberties and freedoms that you and I enjoy. All right? Well, you can probably see what I mean. He overwhelmed me on Saturday and he overwhelmed me today. Nice job, thank you very much, Chris, appreciate it. <clears throat>